So I want to begin by thanking Principal Valerio for hosting us here today and for being in this wonderful space. I also want to thank Governor McKee and our COVID-19 response team for their leadership in making sure that Rhode Islanders are vaccinated and boosted every day so that we can keep our students and staff safe and healthy. PPSD community has been hard at work expanding access to vaccinations and boosters. As the governor mentioned, we're here today because of an upcoming, upcoming this Sunday, February 27th, this school will be hosting one of the two sites that will host clinics in Providence for ages five through 11. Why this site? We have a 16% vaccination rate. These events, for those of you that are interested, which should be everyone, are from 11 to 2 p.m. and you can visit providenceschools.org to register, get a full schedule and for more details. I have to say that I've had the privilege of being in this job during the pandemic. And there's a word that was used here today that I have to say, it, it made me feel so good. The word treatable. Think about where we were two years ago. Every day was something new, but it is treatable. We have the tools at our disposal. So on Sunday, that event will be open to everyone. Come and get the tools you need. We don't think about polio anymore because we got vaccinated. Let's do it. Let's not make healthcare political. That was not in my talking points. <laughs> but I will say that this past Sunday, Providence had an amazing turnout. Over 150 people were vaccinated. Over 45,000 meals were distributed. That's really the work that's happening as we work together to keep moving forward. With that said, I want to take a minute to urge you, if you have not gotten vaccinated, if your kids have not gotten vaccinated, I know you're tired of hearing it, but guys, I'll tell you a quick story. I ran into the governor at an event with my then 13-year-old son who went up to the governor and I was so embarrassed. He said, Governor, do we have to wear masks at school? And he stomped his foot and the governor looked at me like, I guess you didn't talk about it at home. And nobody wants to be here. And the answer is, when we're in that space, we have to all do our part so we can go back to being in a better space. I get it. I'm a mother. I got it. I get the same complaints at home but it is also my job to get my child vaccinated. He has been vaccinated and so has my 11-year-old daughter. I ask you, make the decision to move Rhode Island into the place where we need to be. And that is making sure that our students are safe in the classroom. So one of the things that are really important as we start thinking about this work it's time for you to schedule that appointment. I'm gonna give you the information, go get a pen. C19vaccineri.org or call 844-930-1779. I will repeat that again later in case you didn't get your pen. It is critical for communities like Providence where the 35% of eligible students have completed their primary vaccination series compared to communities like East Greenwich, which is at 79. It's hard, it's hard to hear that. Quiero tomar un minuto para pedirle a la comunidad de Latina, aquellos que son elegibles, que no han hecho, no han vacunado sus niños, o no la han reforzado la vacuna. Por favor, este es el momento. Se lo vamos a poner fácil. Si desea programar una cita para vacunarse, busque la clínica más cercana a ustedes. Vayan a la C19B corta, 
A-C-C-I-N-E-R-I punto o, o llame a los 844-930-1779. Le pido a los padres, por favor, si no han vacunado a sus niños, piensen eso. Nosotros no pensamos en el polio ya. Acuérdense que muchos años atrás teníamos la vacuna que dejaba la marquita. Señores, eso es algo muy importante para nuestra comunidad. Tomen esta oportunidad. Vamos a tener esto, las clínicas abiertas para todos. Piénsenlo, hable con los pediatras, muy importante. Aquí en Providence tenemos un 35% de los niños elegibles que se han vacunado. A lo opuesto que en, en East Greenwich están en 79. ¿Por qué? Por favor, este es el momento de unirnos y trabajar como una comunidad para poder llegar a lo que, es, lo que nosotros teníamos antes, la normalidad. Le voy a contar un cuento breve. Mi hijo conoció al, al gobernador y fue donde él, sin yo preguntarle, le preguntó, ¿por qué tenemos que ponernos mascarilla en la escuela? Y a mí por poco se me cae la cara. Pero él le respondió, cuando estemos ya seguros y salvos todos y vacunados, vamos a llegar a ese punto. Por favor, vamos a trabajar juntos para llegar a tomar esas decisiones para nuestras familias. So, as we've done since vaccines were first approved in public school, uh, for the, to the public, we will continue to work with our local school leaders to make sure students and families in every zip code get theirs. With the focus on schools that have the lowest rates, go the governor mentioned we are specifically asking schools with vaccination rates under 20% to host a clinic. 20%. This is especially critical in elementary schools since vaccines for students 5 to 11 were just approved in November. And we're seeing a lag. Rhode Islanders don't want to lag in anything. We have led the way and we need to continue to lead. Vaccinations are safe and effective and are key to a key strategy to preventing the spread and keeping students learning in person. And we know that our kids need to be in the classroom academic, social, emotionally, we know. We've tried it the other way. This is what we need to do. Last Friday, RIDO shared their latest guidance for K-12 school leaders to help them make the best decisions possible in their school districts. Because it will be a localized decision. As RIDO has shared, their data shows a rapid decline in number of COVID cases statewide. We're optimistic that we'll continue heading in the right direction. Throughout the last few weeks, we've been working with RIDO and districts to help them review the data and create guidance that works for their school communities. While the executive order on school masking sunsets March 4th, we can't emphasize that districts will still need to, will still may require or may recommend masks. It's not an automatic. For example, in Providence, we will be continuing to require masks. We're going to keep our eyes on the data, promote vaccines for families across the districts, urge testing as recommended, and working at the Department of Health to support PPSD, the schools to do the best in our ability to continue to increase the vaccination rate. As always, we're grateful to the team at RIDO and the governor's office for their thoughtful leadership. And now I'd like to hand it over to our superintendent. Javier Montañez. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. I don't know if anyone ever knows, but standing over here is really scary. But we'll, we'll get over that, right? Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you, um, Commissioner, for introducing me. And um, good morning to all. As you heard the Commissioner say, my name is Dr. Javier Montañez, Acting Superintendent in Providence public school. Having worked in education for nearly three decades, that's a lot to say, I can tell you that we focus a lot on numbers to measure performance. Whether it may be a math quiz, your RICAS scores, or your attendance. And now, with the pandemic, we have a new focus on numbers, which is the vaccine. 
the vaccine rates. That's because we know that vaccine are one of the best tools to keep our students and staff safe. Vaccines also help us keep the, our students in the classroom where we know they learn best. Also, PPSD has made it priority to give our students and families access to vaccines through free clinics hosted at our schools. I am proud to say that more than 70 vaccine clinics have been held in Providence Public School buildings over the past year. We already have 17 clinics scheduled throughout the next month, including a pair of clinics for students ages 5 through 11 this coming Sunday. As the commissioner stated and mentioned, this is the age group that we really want to see the vaccine rate increase. We're also taking important steps to make it make the needs of our to meet the needs of our community. For example, we have staffed our clinics with interpreters because Spanish Spanish speaking are such an important part of our PPSD family, and we want to make sure that everyone gets the information they need to make the choice of getting vaccinated. We hold clinics on weekends, after school hours, but we also know that transportation and scheduling can be a barrier for so many families. So we're making, so we're making sure vaccines are also available during school hours. In fact, the week of March 7th, we'll be holding the high school vax week for Providence schools. Every high school student will have the opportunity to get vaccinated or boosted. We're sending information and consent forms. We need the consent forms. Please, parents, sign them, send them back to schools. For every high school student and family this week. We already see the impact of some of, some of these efforts. Some of our schools already have 60% student fully vaccinated, but that's still a lot of work to do, especially, especially our elementary schools where the rates are only 20%. So this is my call to PPSD families. We'll keep providing easy access for vaccine and answering any questions you have, but this is a two-way street. We need you to take the next step and get your child vaccinated. Lastly, we know that testing also plays a key role in keeping our students safe and in the classroom. So heading into the February vacation, PPSD provided free COVID tests for every student and staff members to use the weekend before returning from the break to help us limit the spread of the virus. We also returning to school next week and a staggered schedule. We can this way we can test the students as they come into the building. This will give us a better chance to spot any community spread. This approach with vaccine is the foundation and testing and masking on top of that. It will put us in the right role to making sure everyone is safe and finish a strong school year. Thank you.